Hello again. I'm going to show you today how I do my roast beef. Now, we would have turkey traditionally on Christmas Day, but I understand that a lot of people um, have alternatives. We would have roast beef at some time during the festive season. So I have a four pound sirloin joint here. I have onions still in their skins, just roughly cut into quarters. I have three celery sticks, again, just roughly cut, and three carrots, roughly cut, and three bay leaves. Now, I won't be using any of this veg in my meal, so it'll all be discarded, so that's why we don't need it to be finely cut or anything like that. Now, I have made a rub for the top of my beef. And you can make a rub yourself depending on what flavours you prefer. So start off with your salt and your pepper and then add your herbs of choice. I've used thyme, rosemary, sage and a bit of fennel and a spoon of garlic powder. Then to that you add a glug of olive oil and you just stir it then until it makes a thick paste. I have preheated my roasting pan on the top of the stove. I've put a good glug of olive oil in it, preheated it and then I have my meat on it and I'm going to seal it all round. Now you do need a very heavy roasting pan to do this. Don't have the gas or the heat turned up full. Keep it on a medium and keep turning your meat with a pair of tongs so that you get it sealed as best you can all the way round. Now, if you don't have a heavy pan, you're best to do it in the bottom of a saucepan or a, fry, a frying pan. So we'll just let this get sealed right the way round and then we'll move on to getting our stock into it. You want to get all sides of the meat sealed. Now be very careful because the pan is very hot and if you're using a good size bit of meat um, it might slide so please be very very careful. As you can see now I have my meat sealed. I'm going to move it into the middle of the pan and I'm going to put my veg in all around it. I've just popped the veg and the bay leaves into the pan and now I'm going to put my rub over the top of my joint. Here we have the beef now and it's ready for the next stage. Now we don't eat red meat in this house so I tend to cook the beef at a lower temperature for a longer time. Now if you do like your meat slightly rare you want to cook it for 20 minutes to the pound and an extra 20 minutes at 160 degrees. But for me, I'm going to cook it for probably maybe even double that at 150 degrees. But what I also do is I put water into my pan halfway up. So I half fill my pan with water. Now, what you can also do is... Um, you can put your meat on a rack as well if you're going to use the, the water. Again, I don't I have the water in now. I'm going to cover the tin entirely with tin foil paper and put it into the oven. Now, it's going to be, the, the pan's going to be hot. The water's hot. So be very, very careful, please. It's ready for the oven. I will actually cook this joint for approximately five hours, four to five hours. I'll see how tender it is at four hours. But now I have to say again, this is because we don't eat red meat. So your cooking time would be much less if you do like your meat to be slightly rare. I've peeled a few potatoes. I'm going to steam them now and then I'll roast them whenever the meat's just finishing up its last hour. I have my potatoes parboiled in just an ordinary freezer bag. I've put some vegetable oil, fine semolina, salt and pepper. I'm now going to put my potatoes in there and toss them in that. 
Now you want to give them a good toss. I have let the potatoes cool down before I've done this. And when you put them into the bag then, what it does is it kind of breaks down the edges of them and it'll give you the nice crispy potatoes. Now I have an, a dish here with some vegetable oil in the bottom of it and some butter. I'm going to put that into the oven to melt and heat before I add the potatoes to it. I have my potatoes ready now for mash. I steam my potatoes. I'm using roosters and I try to get them cut more or less evenly so as they cook evenly and then you've less lumps. With the Brussels sprouts I just cut off the ends of them and took off any outer leaves. I'm going to put them on to steam as well underneath the potatoes. I have a few carrots in here now and I'm going to parboil them before I finish them off in the oven. We have our parboiled carrots and we're putting them into a roasting bag with a good knob of butter, some tarragon, salt and honey and they can be cooking at the same time as the roast potatoes. The meat's now cooked. I'm going to just let it sit for about 45 minutes before I slice it. I'm going to strain my stock, discard any of the veg and make my gravy out of the stock. Set your potatoes into your melted butter and oil and just turn them over and then put them into your hot oven to 20 degrees. So here we are making the roux for the gravy now. So I have about two and a half ounces of butter. I'm going to melt that down and add four heaped tablespoons of plain flour. Just going to steam some cauliflower and broccoli. The roux is ready so I'm going to put the gravy back on to heat again with two beef stock cubes and then we'll add the roux. Here we have our ingredients now for Yorkshire puddings. Milk, eggs, flour, salt and some virgin olive oil. So first of all we'll put the eggs and the milk into our bowl and then we'll add the flour and salt and we'll give it um, a fairly rapid beat. So we'll combine the milk and the eggs and incorporate as much air as we can. So I've added the flour now and I'm just going to combine it to a nice batter. I'm just going to add now a glug of olive oil to the mix and let it beat for another couple of minutes. You'll get better results from your Yorkshire pudding batter if you let it stand for at least an hour before you use it at room temperature. I'm using a muffin tray today to make the Yorkshire puddings. So I have just over half a teaspoon of vegetable oil in them. I'm going to put the oven up to 220 and get the oil really, really hot. I'm going to just give my batter mix another beat and transfer it into a jug. So here we have the hot oil and I'm just going to put my batter mix into it now halfway up the muffin tins. Now straight into an oven at 220 degrees. Yorkshire puddings just out of the oven. So here we have the finished result. We have our broccoli, cauliflower, Yorkshire pudding, Brussels sprouts, carrots, roast potatoes, roast beef and of course gravy. We're ready now to get tucked in mashed potatoes, our veg, our roast potatoes, Yorkshire puddings, gravy.